Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, welcome to my channel. Hi, I'm Kayla, and these are my dogs, Hadia and Milo. And today, the three of us are gonna talk about one of my favorite topics of all time, Pomeranian grooming. If you have ever considered buying a Pomeranian or you have a Pomeranian or you're clueless about Pomeranians or you're just curious to know a little bit more about the breed, stay tuned. If there is something that I wish someone would have told me about Pomeranian ownership, I wish someone would have told me how grooming intensive it is because they do require a lot of daily care. I do all of my own Pomeranian grooming myself and I would not go to a groomer unless it was a very breed specific groomer. No, God! Pomeranians are a double coated breed. So they have a hair coat here on top, and then underneath they have what's called an undercoat or a wool coat. And with double coated breeds, if the hair is cut too short and is cut into the wool coat, there is a chance that it will never grow back normally. It could grow back and it could just look like a normal palm, but there's a chance that if you give your Pomeranian a haircut, especially one of the very popular like internet haircuts, um, you could destroy their coat permanently and you could never have such long and luxurious hair. And I love their long hair. I bought these dogs specifically for their long hair. So I have never understood or related to people who buy Pomeranians and then get their hair cut so that they just look like a normal dog. Like they're not a normal dog. It's a Pomeranian. It's supposed to be a puffball. So this one is my little kitchen mouse and she <laughs> smells a little dustier. And this one is my little outdoor mouse and he um, is more active and more outdoorsy. So his coat is a little more mangy and her coat is a little more stinky. So my dogs will need a form haircut. I just take off their split ends and kind of make them look more round and compact. But today is not the day for me to cut them. So I'm not gonna cut them today, I'm just gonna groom them. So the first step of grooming I'm actually already taking care of. Um, so I can't show you guys in the video, but they, need their feet taken care of. I cut my palms and nails like once a week. I try to keep them really short so that um, they don't grow long because the more often you cut a dog's nails, the shorter they can become. Basically the nerve endings of the nail over time grow with the nail in all dogs. So if you ever see dogs with really long nails that are like this, where even if you cut the tiniest end, they bleed, it's because they haven't been cut frequently enough. Whereas if you cut them more and more often, the nerve endings will recede. And that's why when you see show dogs, I swear to you, I think they cut them like every day and they just have the tiniest little nails. And I think that's so cute, but that's not gonna happen for mine. So I do try and keep it like once a week. And then on more of like a monthly basis, I also need to shave the soles of their feet and cut their feet into form. The feet need to be cut to look like cat feet. So they should be short and round and compact and not have long feathers growing out of them. His little footbeds have been shaved. Yeah, he look a boy. So that he has good traction on the ground and so that he doesn't slip. So I shaved the undersides of their feet and then cut them into form just yesterday, which is why they look so fresh because before they were looking really ratty. What we're gonna do now is I'm going to brush him, but just like a light brush because I don't have that much time. This is not gonna be the most intense brushing session of his life. And then we will go into the bathroom and show how we bathe them. Today, the brush I'm gonna use first is this one. The bristles are made of nylon and I'm gonna go through his whole coat and just get out like the little knots. 
And then after that, if I was completely serious about getting his undercoat brushed, you have to go through with this kind of a brush and go through his entire undercoat. This is the detangling spray that I use and it smells so good. It's very, very, very fresh. This will just help me de-knot their coats. So first, I'm just gonna hit the coat one time and check for any little gnarls on their top hair before I do a little deeper brush through everything. Okay, so now I'm gonna flip him over and I'm just gonna look at his cute belly and get all this mange out. This is just little dreadlocks in there that we have to get out before we put him in the tub. And I would say that you need to do like a deep brushing probably once a season. They change their coats out twice a year, but today is not my day for like the deep, deep, deep brushing. We're just gonna do a little one here. And it's also a good idea to kind of start emotionally preparing them for the bath. You don't want them to fight you. So you have to remind them that baths are relaxing and that baths are good and that we do baths because we love them and not because we hate them. Talk to them in a nice voice. Prepare them like mentally for the bath. Okay, that's pretty much good enough. And now I'm gonna take her. She is a girl dog and she lost more hair than him this winter. So right now her coat is especially thin. A little depressing, but she will get um, thicker eventually in the spring. It always surprises me that on hypoallergenic lists, Pomeranians are not listed because I have had many dogs in my lifetime and these guys shed the least of any that I've ever had. Uh, I had a pug mix. That would be my most shedding dog. Pugs shed like hell. And I had a Labrador and Labradors also shed like hell. But these palms actually with this double coat, they have more of like a hair texture than a, um, fur and so they don't have dander. Like they don't leave dander all around the house and they don't leave like dog fur all around the house. And when you run your hands over them, your hands never like gets hair on it. Whereas some dogs are kind of like oily in their coat and so after you touch them, you, have, you feel like you have to go wash your hands. Palms don't have that, which is like insane. That's like one of my favorite things about them is that they are so clean. Like they are so clean on their own. The pre-work before the bath is just so important. Oh God, okay. I'm gonna finish this up and then I'll meet you in the bathroom. Okay. So now I'm here in the bathroom, and before I call the dogs in, I'm just gonna talk about what's about to happen. So I have a tub from Ikea, and this is kind of my multi-purpose tub, but if you also have an extremely small dog, probably a bathtub is too big, and so I really recommend something about this size that you can use like a baby bathtub. I like to soak them in there before I wash them, and I think that um, the tub shape is more happy and comfortable for them than just using the shower sprayer. The shampoo and conditioner that I'm gonna be using today is the same from John Paul Pet. This is the lavender mint scent. This is for shampoo. And this is the oatmeal conditioning rinse. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill up my tub. I'm gonna put a tiny bit of shampoo in there and then I'm going to soak the dogs for a couple minutes. Then I'm gonna wash them and scrub them. Then I'm gonna rinse all the shampoo off. And then we are going to, when they're completely rinsed, put the conditioner on. And because they have long hair, we're going to wait five minutes with the conditioner on before we rinse it off. Okay, let's get started. This is 
life of using all my stuff on them. So this is for them now. You do not want to hunt for a towel with a wet dog. So I'm going to take her now and I'm going to swaddle her up very tight. He knows what's coming next. Oh my god. This is now my favorite part. I generally like to wait like a half hour between the bath and the blow dry just so that they kind of naturally dry as much as they can on their own. But a blow dry is a blow dry, right? I'm just gonna hold the blow dry and I'm gonna dry them. So there's no special technique or skill to it. So I will just film it like as a time lapse and then I will show you guys them when they are done. And I give them lots of treats and lots of love so they know that this is a positive experience. dogs so they are both all done but oh my god it's just kind of like enough for today but there's still more that we can do for both of them he is having a ton of matting in his undercoat so like sometime this week I'm probably gonna have to do like a real once a season brushing on him the other thing that I might have to do is cut them for form but I'm not in a hurry to do that tonight. So like if I would do that, I would trim like the dead ends from their tails, like the, this, this kind of stuff. And then I would trim any kind of like extremely like dead looking ends from their beards so that they look 
very compact and very round. I wouldn't do that until after I've completely brushed them at the root all the way. And the best way to not cut too much off is to make sure that they are completely brushed out. So that's more of a process of like teasing it out, brushing it, and then cutting a tiny bit. But in my opinion, all of this stuff down here, wait a second, can you see this if I go like this? All of this stuff down here could be really tidied up so that his legs have like a very good shape. You especially want like the the tail to go up and be very defined. So his tail's pretty scraggly right now. And then you want the butt to look compact and round and not too shaggy. But I think that brings us to the end here. They're so soft, they're so nice, they smell so good, they're so happy. And now we're gonna call it a day. So, thanks for being here. Please hit subscribe if you wanna see more Pomeranian videos. And please write me a comment if you are curious about any other Pomeranian stuff because they are my pride and my joy and I am so happy to talk about them anytime. And I would be happy to do tons of more dog and Pomeranian content in the future. Okay, that's it and have a good one. Bye.